Being surrounded by water is a fact of life in western Washington, and now science is able to give us a better view of what's underneath the surface of Puget Sound. Robots, submersibles, and marine science are the focus of today's Sound Conversations with Jeff Renner. Hello, I'm King Fog meteorologist Jeff Renner, and with me is Dr. Fritz Starr, an oceanographer at the University of Washington, manager of the Sea Glider Fabrication Center. Tell us what a sea glider is and what does it do? Well, sea glider is an underwater robot, um, and it collects data about the ocean as it, uh, as it flies underwater, just like a glider in the air does. And it's one of a group of autonomous vehicles that are helping us explore the ocean in ways we've never been able to do before. What are some examples of things that you've been able to find out with a sea glider? Well, some of the things that, are, that have been very interesting uh, have been conditions in areas that are very hard to get to by ship, such as the Labrador Sea or uh, up in the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Um, these are places that uh, ships just really can't go for the winter time of the year particularly, and we've been able to operate these robots there and understand the ocean circulation uh, in new ways, which has been really remarkable. Um, they've also played a role in following um, such things as the underwater plume of oil droplets that uh, was, uh, happened during the Deepwater Horizon event mm -hmm. in the summer of 2010. The sea gliders bring up an interesting point, and that is, does science drive the development of new technology, or does the development of new technology drive new science? How do you come up on that side of the issue with these? Well, that's, that's a really good question. It's the old chicken and egg argument. Um, and uh, I, I believe that uh, the, the better tools we have, the, the more in-depth we can learn about the world. And so, but oftentimes, you know, question, a, a particular scientific question will drive the development of a new tool. One of the interesting devices that you work with are these ROVs. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those, and we're, have, we're going to have an example that we'll show, but tell us about how those are being used and how essentially they're an extension of our hands in places that we physically yeah. can't or shouldn't it, go. That's, it, it is, uh, in fact, it, uh, very much an extension of, of hands and the idea of human presence in the deep ocean uh, without the risk of human presence in the deep ocean. So it allows us long term observations on the seafloor in, in dangerous places, places where there are underwater volcanoes, um, places where there are, you know, landslides or collapses, et cetera, um, places that you really wouldn't want to have people in a submarine. Um, or, you know, so, so this is it's another one of these extensions of our ourselves in many respects that's allowed us uh, an amazing glimpse at uh, things we've never seen before uh, in the underwater world. This is going to be a very interesting program, and not to give away too much, but we're going to see a first-hand demonstration where you'll get to see one of these ROVs operate. Some of them are not much bigger than this, really. That's right. They, they can make them as, as little as that, and they're very useful, and as the, and the size of practically this studio. So you'll get to see that at the Seattle Aquarium. Again, Dr. Starr is going to be our first guest for Sound Conversations. That's Thursday evening, March 1st at 7.30. We'll hope you join us. Thanks for joining us for this.